Welcome everyone to the Pet Biz Support Show. My name is Bella Vasta and I'm uh, here with the wonderful Kate McQuillan out in Ireland. Kate, how are you? I am good. How are you? I'm fantastic. I am so ready to talk about how to kick ass when it comes to networking today. Um, I love that title. Thank you for creating that title. I know most probably think it's me and my crassness coming across that. That was all this Ireland chick. <laughs> yeah, need to kick um, ass. Yeah. And um, so twice a month, the first and third Tuesday of every month, we get together and we do this fun show. It started out to be 20 minutes. Last episode, you all wanted us to keep going. So we kept it going for about 40 minutes. Um, it's high energy, it's back and forth, it's real life examples from two people who have the street cred to know what they're talking about. We're not just kind of like reading Wikipedia off to you. Um, check us out if you want. Um, Kate, go ahead and list out your websites. I will put them in the chat. Fantastic. And I'll put mine as well. Um, so you all can like go hop on over and check us out while we're talking here. I want to encourage everyone who's listening to us right now, go ahead and don't be bashful. If you have something to say, let us know. If you like what we're saying, give us props down below. Um, and if you have a question, write it in the chat, um, tweet it out, post it out, help us spread the word because we're here for you. And the more feedback we get, the better it's going to be. We'll ask, we'll answer your direct questions. You guys can come on in in the lock seat. Um, also say your site, Sites out loud for the recording, ladies. Okay, Roy. Um, I am jumpconsulting.net and callbellas.com. And Kate is postmedia.com and petsittersisland.com. Fantastic. And, and it's in the side. So if anyone wants to ask a question, you can just put that in the comments and it appears under question if you put forward slash Q. So put those Good in questions and we can ask them as we go and by putting forward slash q it really like alerts us that there's a question exactly. because sometimes we might miss something in the chat um i love this map feature up here don't you we've got someone from Perturtis. so which one are you that's how bad my geography is <laughs> uh -huh. i'm on the bottom left i think it might even be green maybe i don't know i don't know anyways i'm in scottsdale arizona and you're in Ireland, right? Ireland, and it is 11 o'clock at night. What time is it there? It's only four o'clock here. It's only four o'clock. Yes, and I have a major victory. Olivia, my daughter, just took like the most amount of food by mouth that she ever has taken. Wow. Um, that funny. is um, an amazing feat for us because my daughter was actually born at 12 ounces. And today is our one year anniversary of her being home with us because her first I six months read that on were in the hospital. Yeah. So it's the a real happy day. I almost opened up a bottle of wine and just drank on this with you. <laughs> but I figured I would just wait and share it with my husband when I get off. <laughs> you can't do a drunken blab. <laughs> that, that's called happy hour. And we should get people <laughs> together for that. Exactly. How's it going over in Ireland? Anything uh, anything new it's over there? Good. It's going good. A little bit cold here. Uh -huh. But um no, good. Busy. Keep him busy. That's That's great. Awesome. That is Next. great. So, um, I don't know where we should start. Um, I think there's a couple of things probably that we can talk about this evening. Networking face to face. And then something I do quite a lot of as well is networking via contacting people through my blog. Mm -hmm. um, that's something people can do as well. So I know you have um, oh, I know what we need to talk about first. Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember where I left off there, but um, this Dunkin' we Donuts up saga. Last time where they had emailed you again and said, we we're looking into it. Yeah. Um, well, apparently they're still looking into it because I haven't gotten anything from it. So what I'm using that $25 that's on my Dunkin' app for is strictly bagels and sandwiches when I'm hungry, but I'm still going to Starbucks for my coffee. For all of you who have, did not hear that whole saga, it's on our last show. Um, Kate, are you still there with us? I am, I'm still okay. here. All right, the video had frozen for a second. Um, I had a discrepancy with Dunkin' Donuts, and so I tweeted them because being a big brand, I thought that I would actually get some 
reply. And um, I didn't. So I tweeted them again and again and again with hashtag Duncan fail. Um, mm -hmm. And of course their own Twitter name. And um, I got like a DM saying, please email us. So I did. And my big thing was, hey guys, why is it so easy for me to spend money on my Starbucks app, but not on my Dunkin' Donuts app? Can I order from it? And they said, no, you can't order from it. It's in beta, but we might come out with it. Like, but they told me that two weeks later, after I got like one or two very generic messages of, thank you for your email, we will forward it to the correct department. And it just kind of killed me. So um, I was not excited with that experience and really thought that our good friend Jay Bear would like love to hear about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just ongoing and it just says a lot for your online network and reputation. Mm -hmm. You know, all of my followers now know that I really am displeased with Duncan and that when I, when I voiced my displeasure, they really didn't care. So Did they watch your video you made Bella. I think, oh, well, they didn't acknowledge it, but I think they might've watched it. I, I actually posted a rant in the car, I think it was, um, yeah. which I'm very known to do. And I posted that on facebook.com backslash jump consulting. See that Roy? I said the, the, um, <laughs> the URL, <laughs> um, it's basically my jump consulting, um, Facebook page. And I, I posted the whole rant when it actually happened. I, I just think that, um, you know, Starbucks has got it right, Kate, they are making Thanks it so enough. easy for me to just order straight from my phone. I walk right in past the lines, pick up my coffee. Dunkin' Donuts, they want me to download an app and put money on it, but I don't get to cut line. I don't get to order online. Like, I, I don't understand the point. We were actually oh. chatting on Facebook one day, uh, voice chat, when you actually got out of your car, went into Starbucks, got your coffee, carried on talking oh, to yeah. you, came out and got back in the car. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it's perfect. It's you so couldn't have done that if you had to order and wait and... Yeah. Um, my bookkeeper is going to give me my expenses for 2015 and I'm curious to find out how much I actually spent at Starbucks. I will actually post that real number because that card gets reloaded $25 at least once a week, at okay. least. <laughs> so, you just a coffee. Yeah. Um, I kind of like my <laughs> iced <laughs> Americanos. Kate, that's what you do when you're a mom and you have a toddler. <laughs> well, that's why Dunkin' Donuts need your business. I know, right? And they're only a mile down the street from me, but I will now drive three or four miles to go to Starbucks. Exactly. So right. anyways, that's the start. That's the Dunkin' Donuts saga. And um, there's a lesson in that. Good customer service and make it easy for your customers. It amazes yeah. me how many people posting in pet sitting forums saying they don't need pet sitting software. People can pay by check. People can pay by cash. They don't want to take credit cards. You know, it's just another step for people to take. It's crazy. It's Absolutely. a double fold thing. It's like it's another step for your your possibly your your client to do. Like I know I'm always lagging if I have to pay a PayPal invoice because it takes me forever to do it. I don't know why it just does. And it also is more reconciliation for the business owner. So exactly. it's just it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't everything you can do to make it easy. I even had somebody say to me that you shouldn't put your phone number on your advertisements, that you should just let people go to your website and find the number to call you themselves. Crazy. You know, I think, I think that is, um, that really depends on, on your situation. You know, I know some business owners who don't have an office manager and work uh, in an office all day. So I could see like, that's the way they want their sales funnel to go. But generally speaking, I would say, guys, don't you want the business? Like, mm -hmm. these are probably the same people that are like complaining about, I don't have enough business. And it's like, well, put your damn phone number on your advertisement. But even right? if you have a voicemail, a voicemail is easier. People will leave a message or they can text you um, and then you can put, you know, get back to them. But to not have a phone number, I wouldn't even bother looking somebody up. I know. Crazy. I, know. I don't know. I just think like this day and age, there's so many different uh, mediums that you can contact people on that why not make it the easiest possible if you're looking for new business like otherwise that advertisement as you call it is a waste of money so I don't know <laughs> see you later dog street school it was nice to, to meet you <laughs> okay so networking um, but so Kate, I want you to explain more about you mentioned a second ago about this um interviewing through your blog Tell us more about that and your experience yeah. with it. Because I know that there's some pet sitters um, as recently as today that we're talking about how 
they tried to reach out to six people and they didn't really have that good of a result. So tell us more about that. Well, firstly, I would say, as I said to that person, six people is not a good test. Like they might be just the bad six. The next six could be great. It's something that I started doing a long time ago, you know, trying to research products and services in our area and reach out to those people uh, to feature them on our blog. And the purpose behind it was, you know, to get to know them, um, mm. to get into their network so that when I write about them on our blog, they're all excited. They share it with their Facebook fans, their followers, and really to get them to know about us. So if I'm contacting a groomer, um, I'm featuring them on our blog and promoting them on our website and on our list to our customers. Um, when someone comes into the grooming place and they're looking for a pet sitter or they say they're going away, the chances are that they're going to recommend us because now we have a relationship. It's not just a company they've heard of. You know, it's Kate from Pet Sitters Island. Oh, that girl's really lovely. She obviously, she interviewed <laughs> me on her blog. You know, I got some customers out of it. You know, and it's a win-win relationship. And it's also great content for your website. Right. Um, I do it with all sorts of pet products. I've had tons of free stuff recently from companies asking me to review stuff. Um, a GPS cat collar, cat toys, dog toys. I got a Dyson vacuum cleaner the other day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Tons, tons of stuff. Now, let, me, but, let me also put this in perspective. Kate, this didn't just happen overnight, right? I no, mean, the thing is, no. is that your page rank on your page is probably, like, mine at least a three or a four, yeah. I would assume. You're ranked very high. You have a lot of great inbound and outbound bound links. You've got incredible traffic to your website. So these people... The better your website becomes, I found too that the more people start seeking you out. This one person paid me $150 to post a blog on my thing, and it was totally up my reader's alley. So I was like, okay, you know. Yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think that's the thing. You know, if you've got a small blog with a half a dozen blog posts on it and you've got 200 followers on Facebook, people aren't going to pay you or ask you to feature them or write about them because it's not really worth their while. You need to have some social proof that you can actually put their products or their services in front of their ideal customers. Like for Dyson, like we have a massive Facebook following. We have huge traffic to our website. These are their perfect customers. It's a animal Dyson, so it's perfect for our customers to use. There's the Dyson grooming tools that they've sent as well. So for them to get a review off us, you know, it's it's potential customers all coming back to their website and it's credibility for us, you know, it's great proof. That right, because you're, you're a position of influence amongst a large community. I mean, you've got exactly. 23,000 people on your Facebook page yeah. and run like the, the, the nation's largest like pet photo contest. So, I mean, you've got, like I said at the beginning, a lot of street cred, girl. Exactly. And you know what? It's great to get all of this content um, because, you know, sometimes you don't want to write about pets sitting and a dog walking all day long. You know, yeah. there, is, there comes a limit when, you know, even you're bored of seeing it all the time on your own website. So it's nice to mix it up. I did an article today on, um, oh, it's like a pet selfie gadget. You attach it to the top of your iPhone and it has a little ball on it, makes a noise and you can get the perfect <laughs> dog selfie. But you know There's what? For that too. My, That's hilarious. Wow. The company wrote the entire article for me. They sent me all the images. All I did was just post it on the website. Yeah. It's been huge. We've noticed huge traffic, a lot of referrals. We did a huge project last year with vets uh, to find Ireland's best vet. And mm -hmm. we've got people to submit the names of their vets. Then we interviewed them on the blog. It was fantastic. Great uh, resource for people and also great referrals. I love what you just said about the vets because interviewing vets or veterinarians um, is a fantastic idea. Um, we've done that as well, but I like how you actually put it to a vote first. And mm -hmm. then I'm sure your value proposition was something like, hey, you know, we did a thing and everyone voted you were awesome. So we'd like to interview you on how awesome you are. And it, it's, you're coming in a lot more warm than, um, than just so cold being like, hey, you want to interview? Kind of like I did. Um, but nonetheless, I was able to build relationships, and now I have on the front page of callbellas.com a veterinarian endorsing our yeah, services. Brilliant. So that's that gives you some street cred. I guess that's my word today. Um, you know, and helps helps people who are checking you out. Who I mean, our customers are coming at us because they don't trust us. 
the best way to trust someone is get to know them. And the best way to get to know them is to network, right? Yeah, and I think the way that went, instead of just going into the vets and saying, hey, can you put my business cards here? And I know you're gonna talk about events and creating relationships face-to-face with vets. Um, it's kind of a softer approach. You're giving them something. You're saying, hey, everybody tells me you're so great. Let me talk about you. Rather yeah. than saying, oh, hey, can you tell all your customers that you've worked so hard to get to come use my pet sitting service? Right, right. And it just comes across as a little bit more softly, softly, and you're giving rather than taking. And I think that's been a big plus in this approach for us that, you know, it's a little bit more cutesy in the back door rather than full on, you know, promote my business. Right. And there's so many ways. I mean, as you're talking, I'm just thinking about all the ways that have worked so well with us, um, with the veterinarians. Another idea, a lot of them give away, or at least in my area, I don't know, do they do this where you're at, Kate? They give like a free um, getting to know you visit or a free yeah. wellness visit for mm-hmm. the first pet. And um, I just kind of, I take notice to who does that. And when I get a new client or someone inquiring about our service that say, hey, I'm new to the area, I put that that vet on a list and I say, hey, and if you are new to the area, call this vet, they give a free visit, just mention Bella's or something like that. You know, I kind of help promote that for the vet to bring them new business. Um, but it also, it's me being able to give a value to this potential customer, you know? So you're like, oh, wow, you really know what's going on in town. Um, do they do that? Well, you, have to, you have to keep giving. You have to keep giving yeah. to them. And eventually, you know, they will reward you rather than this whole approach of they need to refer you. Or- right. I have I have a free ebook for everyone. It's on the front page of my website. All you got to do is just put in your email and your name. It's called um, the Pet Sitter's Guide to Networking: Barking Up the Right Tree, and it's actually pretty time, funny I if think. you ask me. Oh, oh, we lost Kate. Kate will come back hopefully. Um, let's unlock the seat so she can come back. There you are, Kate. Good. Come on back in, girl. Um, if you go to my website, jumpconsulting.net, and you download that free ebook, there's tons of ideas. I even talk about how to give a great 30 second speech and how I once stood up on a chair on a microphone in the middle of the Scottsdale Chamber of Commerce and barked on the microphone. Because when everyone's doing their 30 second commercial, everyone gets tired of listening. And if you all of a sudden hear someone going bark, 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 or meow, everyone like stops what they're doing and is like, what in the world is going on? So um, there's so many different ideas I have for you guys, and just go ahead and and do that. Okay. Kate, you're back. Oh my gosh, you almost scared me. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> um, I was just telling everyone about barking into the microphone for a 30 second uh, commercial. You should oh, those were the days. Those were the days. Everyone knew who Bella was, though, and that's how I built my brand. Exactly. You know? Yeah, I mean, you do not forget the person that gets on the microphone and starts barking. No. Um, now, I think it was Matt Frazier in our last one, Kate. He was saying, but guys, I don't have the confidence to do this. Exactly. So let's address that a little bit because mm-hmm. I'm sure not everyone is comfortable getting on a microphone and barking um, or walking into a veterinarian. So I don't even I would bark on a microphone. <laughs> yeah, you probably wouldn't. I mean, I'm a little kind of outrageous sometimes. Maybe a little meow. <laughs> <laughs> meow. <laughs> Um, what advice would you have for yourself, you know? Um, I think with this kind of thing, it wouldn't be my favorite thing to do, going marching into places and it going, hi, I'm this, I'm uh, selling them. That's the thing, I don't like selling, but I'd uh-huh. certainly try to create a relationship and see how I could help them. I'm a big believer in helping people and then eventually they'll just automatically help you back. Right. Uh, it's just an easier approach. I think it's very hard to go marching down the street and into all these places and just burst in and go, hey, can you put my business cards here? But you can really go in and introduce yourself. And I think you have to have the belief that you have something of value to offer them. Right. right. You know? You have and being to a value. value. You, you can't leave with yourself no, because they don't exactly. know you like you. They don't care about you. Because if you go in with your business cards, you're setting yourself up for rejection. You're yeah. giving them the opportunity to say no. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you go in with something to offer to help them, it's, you know, it's kind of like, why would they say no to something of value to them? Business right, cards right. aren't valuable to them, really, are they? 
no. But you know what would be valuable to an apartment complex or a condo complex, a nice little magnet that has um, to give to move in people, you know, pet places in a three mile radius. Sponsored by XYZ Pet Sitting Company. You know, why don't you put those in those move-in packages because that will get on people's refrigerators. Something else that I like to talk about, Kate, and this is totally off our little list. This is what happens. We make a list and then we like deviate from it. Yeah, and then we don't read it. Networking is, I mean, you cast this net, just like if you're going fishing, you're gonna throw a net out there, but you're not gonna catch every fish in the sea. But once you get that network, that net out there, you have to work that net and Mm -hmm. All you're looking for is one good fish. I mean, you're not looking for all of them to to come to fruition. You probably couldn't handle it if they all did. So no. go to 10 veterinarians or apartment complexes or business contacts or phone calls and just try to make one of them come to fruition. Make friends, as Roy would say, with one of them, you know? Um, do that, lead with value. Don't get butt hurt. <laughs> Okay, this is how you kick ass. You just correct and continue, keep going. You can't take it personal. They're not rejecting you. They're not. I, yeah, they just I think you need to get over that fear of rejection. Like mm-hmm. you said, they're not, it's not personal. And I think one of the easiest ways to get rejected is by not speaking to the right person. The worst right. thing you can do is speak to some a receptionist or somebody that doesn't really have the say, and they'll just say no anyway to whatever it is you're going to say. You need to find that decision maker you know, yeah. the person that's in the position to make a decision about whether or not they can work with you or help you or whatever it is you want, um, rather than getting fobbed off. And that's probably the mistake people make. They rush in, somebody's kind of funny with them, you know, because they're not yep. sure, can we or can't we do this? So they say no, and then they're just afraid to go back, you know? Yeah, or like veterinarian offices are the perfect example of that, uh, mm-hmm. Kate. You know that that receptionist, number one, gets every Tom, Dick, and Harry walking through that door who thinks that they're a new pet sitter today or a new dog trainer today. Mm -hmm. And they think they can just drop off these business cards. The front desk has nothing to say about it. And in my product on the website, um, how to have a howling event or how to get endless referrals from veterinarians, I talk about the fact that you need to do your homework. You need to figure out why this office is different you need to call and find out who the office manager is because the office manager is really the gatekeeper to everything else. Exactly. You get in with that office manager, you talk to them, they like you, they will introduce you at their next employee meeting. They will tell the front receptionist, hey, this is Bella, we recommend her mm-hmm. now. Or this to the boarding, like, you know, if they have a boarding aspect, hey, yeah. this is Bella, we're going to recommend her when it's, um, you know, Memorial Day or whatever it might be. And yeah, you got to know who you're talking to. And and again, like Kate was saying, lead with value. So Kate, give us some examples um, of what would be valuable in a veterinarian office. What would, why would they care about you? I think if you were promoting their services on your blog, so if you were writing about why you should get your annual injections with the vet, why, well, not your, your pet's annual injections, um, you know, why, why does a vet, a vet cost so much? Letting them explain the details, you know, what checks can you get, what health stuff, educating, educating your customers about what they can offer. I think that's a great value to a vet because how do you choose one vet from the vet up the street? It's from personal recommendation. It really is. Sure. You know, if you read somewhere that this person's got loads of referrals or, you know, you've seen them on this blog, someone else has talked about them, you're more likely to use them. It's the same with our services. You know, what makes one better than the other? You know, obviously there's lots of different elements, but a personal recommendation is huge. So that's definitely something that you can help them with. Um, Probably they don't have a blog, um, so why not let them blog on your site? If they can't create the content themselves, you could just interview them, even audio, and just transcribe it yourself. Or I know you do a lot of this, getting people onto blabs. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm doing that a lot. How techy the vet is and how much time they have. I I do find vets don't have a huge amount of time. Um, I don't know if that's different. But I think, think, Kate, that's where the personal relationship comes in. Because would you believe that the video that's on the front page of my website was taped in the vet's backyard with his wife holding the camera? Oh, really? Oh, wow. And I did not have a personal relationship with him before that. But he was like, hey, I I got all these kids. I got all this stuff going on. I want you to come over to my house. Like, okay. You know, and that's kind of how we started becoming friends. And that's why I can say, hey, I've got a vet on call. I got his personal cell phone number. You know, you're away. Your pet's sick. Something happens. 
I could call the vet first if I needed to. Um, Julie uh, here, pet sitter 28079, uh, talked about she called a trainer up and she was thrilled. They met up yesterday. Now they're connected. And she got a referral today. And that's the thing, guys. Like whether you find yourself at a at a traditional networking meeting or you're just kind of meeting up with someone, it's always great to say, hey, like let's grab a cup of coffee. Or yeah. if you're not like geographically desirable, like get on a blab, get on Skype, get on something, have some sort of face-to-face -face conversation. I think face-to-face -face is so important because you need to see in my eyes when I'm rolling them at you <laughs> or I'm like, ha, ah, like so excited at you, you know? Um, that's 93 that. of communication. I know you do a lot of your stuff face-to-face -face. because of our geographical area and because we cover so much of Ireland, that's not always possible for us. So I do have a little system where I send out a link to people to fill in a little survey that I create into a blog because it's not possible to go and meet some of these people. Um, right. so that's, I'd just be traveling around. Um, and I also interview a lot of kind of um, companies in America for pet products. So I do oh. that via this little kind of link that I've set up and that does work well. But yeah, if you can get to meet them even better, even better. Okay, you're freaking machine. <laughs> I, I love like knowing you because you excite me. Like, you know, um, what is it, Gary V and John Thomas, they all say, I think it's kind of universal thing, but, you know, you're the sum of the, the closest five people yeah. in your life. You know, I mean, I just love you in my life, girl. <laughs> you're just so cool. <laughs> um, okay, so here's another idea of to take your um, your networking to the next level. Mm -hmm. Back when the recession like happened and like everything crashed, Kate, you know what I did? I upped my price. I was definitely the most expensive, like by mm -hmm. like seven dollars a visit. Wow! Um, and then I touted everywhere that we're the best value for pet sitting you'll find in the state. Like, how could I charge the most since they were the best value, guaranteed? Well, I was doing a lot of networking at the time, and I knew a lot of my friends that. We're looking for business. I had someone who um, made coffee, believe it or not. I had someone who had a pizza place. I had someone who did um, closet design work. I had all these different people that I knew that loved me and were ready to do anything. So I created gift certificates, Kate, and I told them all that, A, you have to give me something completely for free. So mm -hmm. a free pizza, mm -hmm. a free bag of coffee, something free, not like buy this, get it free, free, yeah. okay? And then I told everyone on the phone, and hey, if you sign up with us, I'm gonna send you $1,500 worth of gift certificates. Wow. And these people, like my vendors loved me because once a month I kind of gave them a list of who I did and none of them ever followed up, but to my knowledge, it would have been great if they followed them and said, hey, you know, I know Bella gave you the gift certificate. Like I invite you to come on in for that pizza, say hi, or you know, whatever it might be. be that would be right? like, so, yeah, the true value. Yeah, and you don't have to go all the way up to like $1,500. You can just say, hey, like dog trainer, would you offer like a free 20 minute consultation on the phone? Or, hey, veterinarian, I know you already offer a free visit. Would you offer a free visit for every new Bella's client? And you could just, or like, hey, pet store, would you give a $10 gift certificate to everyone who became a Bella's client? And there you mm -hmm. go, you got three people right there. You're on the phone, you're talking to them. I that's your bottom dollar. No one else is doing it. But that's how you create that value and spread that value. Now the referral person is like, yeah, you're bringing me new business. Mm -hmm. The new client is like, yeah, I'm going to pick her. I'm going to get more. And you are happy. Right? And people love free stuff. And you're promoting oh, yeah. their businesses. You could interview them on your blog, share information about them, promote them on your Facebook page. And they'll do the same for you. Hey, did you know? If they you sure will. Them? you can get whatever ten dollars off it's in the, the store. it's the reciprocity rule i think it said that right you know i give you something so you want to give me something it's like oh she got me something for christmas i have to get her something now you know it's, <laughs> it's that feeling that it's very true in business what's up kirsten i see that you're on too now <laughs> hi kirsten <laughs> and scott yeah, just joined us as well what's up scott and so, definitely the whole um can you show us templates? Oh yeah, yeah, we'll do. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's the whole giving rather than just expecting something in return. It always amazes me why people think that when they go in with their business cards that they should just automatically promote you without even you know, introducing yourself almost. Like I it's a big it's, must. 
for me to recommend another company, I have to truly believe they're good. Mm -hmm. And then you get to know them. Yeah. You know, you're recommending somebody, allowing somebody into your home. You right. know, you really need a relationship with that person, especially, you know, a vet, you know, seen as, a, you know, somebody important in the community maybe. And they're just mm -hmm. going to recommend a random pet sitter that could be really crap at their job, are they? You know, right. they want to know that you're good. They want to know you have business sense. They want to know that they can say, yeah, hey, Bella is great. She's not a crazy person. Um, so well. I think, <laughs> not all the time. And I think yeah. the opposite is true, too. Just because you have a business card doesn't mean that you're her business, you know? No. So there's no. a lot of people that think they have a business card and they have business. You can have um, one. Kate, we're at 31 minutes right now, and I want to, uh, again, be respectful to our audience. This is kind of a 20, 30 minute show here. You guys, do you want us to keep going or are you ready to wrap up? And just go ahead and post, post it in the comments. Yeah, we can do a hot seat. Someone can come in and ask a question if you want. Um, and while you guys are posting, it looks like everyone wants us to wrap up. I'm not getting any keep goings or yeah, keep talking. And then, I oh, there wait. we go. Okay, oh, thanks, no, Kirsten. Anyone no. else or just Kirsten? While people are or are not telling you. us, um, okay, treat jar. I'll I'll address that definitely, Dog Toronto. Um, but Kate, Dog Toronto asked, um, can you show us templates and surveys in the academy? Yeah, I, I do Tell have us a about the academy. What is this academy they talk about? <laughs> this is where all the um, pet sitters have signed up to get some help and support. Um, you know, it's like a little training center, really. Uh, this month we're working on email marketing, so every month is a different module. I think Bella's gonna come in and do some video training in the next few months to help us all with that. Um, in my studio. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, so there's gonna be different modules every month. There's just a lot of basic training there on Facebook, Facebook ads, Twitter, Instagram all sorts of stuff, but all directly related to the pet industry. So ev basically everything I've done um, in my business and why it works and why it didn't and what's the best way to do it. So it's cool. Right, and like I was saying earlier, hashtag street cred, this girl's got it. <laughs> I mean, once you have 23,000 followers on Facebook, I think you know what you're talking about. 23 um, and a half now. 23 and a half, oh my gosh. And your goal is what this year? 50. Whoa! Thousand, yeah. You'll totally do it. I know you'll do it. You yeah. Rock, we have our big competition wow. coming up in June, so our annual competition. Yeah. That, that I think last year we got about eight thousand new followers from that. So that's incredible. And I love that the most important thing you're saying right now is that you know it was eight thousand of those twenty-two and a half people. You know, yeah. Um, you have the metrics and you're paying attention to it, and that's important because you can't just yeah. be running around like crazy person. Um, Toronto Dog Walker, I totally am spacing out on your name. Tell me your name so I can call you by your name. Um, Julie says she loves the Academy. Of course she does, because it adds a lot of value. Isn't that Maureen, isn't it? Um, oh, that was Maureen. Oh my gosh, you're so right. I just recognized I was calling her Julie earlier. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Maureen. Yes, she's saying, yes, it's me. I'm so sorry. Your your logo, small, kind of reminded me of, um, of Julie's. Anyways, really um, someone had huh? You're tiny on here when you're trying to see who's who. I know, I know. They asked me uh, the treat jar sponsorship. How'd you go yeah, about it? That's another that. really. That's totally easy. You just walk into a like into a place and hey guys, do you have pets here? Which you, by the way, should already know before you walk in there. <laughs> and they say yes. And um, actually, if you give me a moment, I just so happen to be next to the closet. Hold on, I'll show you. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> it's wow. show and tell time. Okay. So for all of those who are you listening but on a different screen, click back to us so it's you can see us again. Treat. <laughs> so you can see us again. So this is, and I got them off Amazon. It's just a oh, jar okay. and like a sticker and you can rub it off. It's like that chalk stuff. And it says treats. Now it was my fault. I would not get like glass again, but I did. And then I also have these cause I, I like a up down um, vertical cause it kind of yeah. stands out. But then just, it says compliments of. So you kind of like leave them like this and 
what place what? wouldn't want to have like treats sponsored? And guys, it gives you a reason to keep coming back every two to three weeks to fill up the treat jar. So yeah. like, mm -hmm. I mean, come and do, on. You find, do you find a lot of the treats and the cards go down? Yes. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And we get a lot of inquiries off of it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but I mean, it works. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a great way to add value. Um, you're not necessarily leading with like, hi, I'm Bella. Can you put these in your new client package? Because my card's going to stand out based off all the others and people are just going to call me because I'm wonderful. It's like the only person that loves you that much is your mama. And your Other people don't care about you. <laughs> what? And your husband. Well, yeah, and your husband, maybe. <laughs> so when so, you go yeah. to do this, do you ring ahead? Do I ring ahead? Well, I would um, ring ahead if I needed to find out information, like do you guys accept dogs? And then I also would find out how expensive are you? Because I'm not going to go to the cheap place because yeah. the cheap place won't afford me because I have... I, uh, I market to a different kind of clientele. Mm -hmm. So I'm all about, you know, quality and not volume. Um, so I'm going to go to the places that are expensive for a one bedroom or have that concierge program that'll do anything for you. Mm -hmm. And leading into that too, most, um, apartments that are zoned for apartments, there's a lot of apartments next to each other, right? Like you don't ever find just like one apartment next to each other in like a whole neighborhood. There's usually a bunch of them because that's how it's zoned. Yeah. So um, something we started doing in December was a dog walking club, Kate, and it was really cool. Um, again, it's not about the quantity of people. It's about the quality of people. Mm -hmm. And if you look up Bella's House and Pet Sitting on Facebook, in one of our albums, you'll see pictures from our last dog walking club. It, looks so it wasn't cool. like, oh my gosh, we're going to go five miles or anything. It was, we're going to go, we're going to have a nice leisurely walk. And then we're going to um, end at a coffee shop. I'll buy everyone coffee and we'll sit around and chat. And, and guess what? Bella. Huh? Do you do it yourself or do you send one of your staff? You know, I sent one of my staff because I'm a big believer in like the delegation thing. But mm -hmm. when the time actually came, um, I was free. And so I just decided to join. But the staff member didn't even know until like 10 minutes. I was like, hey, I'm parking. Where are you? <laughs> um, it's not designed necessarily that I'm out there doing it because um, my life doesn't necessarily allow me to do that. Maybe when I was single with no kids and I could do it. Mm -hmm. But that's something that you could very easily, you know, um, empower someone that you really love on your staff that has an outgoing personality that can that's form those relationships with people that are, are, are socially not awkward. <laughs> you and know? that's the thing. If you don't want to do networking, like you're saying, get your staff to do it. Find that one person in your team that's, you know, super outgoing and enthusiastic and has that natural networking skill if it really isn't your thing. It's better to get somebody else to do it who's going to do a really good job than you go along and feel all awkward and comfortable and, you know, then how long do you leave it before you go back again because you've acted so weird, right. <laughs> you know? Right. It, there's nothing wrong. I'm all for delegating. I delegate anything and everything if I could. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I really like what you were saying earlier, Kate, about you have this form that you send people mm -hmm. for the – for the um. The interviews, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And then you can be like in your pajamas with Coco and Joey, you know, at 11 o'clock at night, writing it all out and posting it to come out when you're at the bar drinking with a friend. Yeah. I think <laughs> what I found mean? was I was emailing people and then it was just like email backs and forwards and then they wouldn't give me everything I needed. And then you'd be going back to them, do you have a picture? Can I use this picture? Whereas now I have the form, if they don't fill all the fields in and add a photo, they can't submit it. So it's just, right. yeah, do you know? And it's a yeah. lot of time consuming. Right, right. You know? Someone was asking, do I bring the cheap treat jars with me? And I don't, just like I don't bring like business cards. Maybe I have like one or two with me, right? Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, do you have business cards? I'll be like, you know what? Like, I really um, want to come back and give you some the treat jars. Is that okay? Yes, okay. Um, here's a couple of business cards, but I'll come back with more. When are you working again? So mm -hmm. that I can actually create an opportunity to come and touch them again, because that's the name of the game. You mm -hmm. really got to see them a couple of times to build off that relationship, find something in common. When you're talking with someone, you'll be like, hey, Kate, oh, you're in Ireland. That's so cool. I always wanted to go. Mm -hmm. um, you have dogs? Oh, I have dogs too. Oh, that's so cool. Next time I see Kate, I'll be like, hey, how are your dogs, Kate? <laughs> like, what's going on with them? Like, Whatever I started talking to you about or found in common with you, I want to keep building off of it. Mm -hmm. 
So that's it looks something less. It looks less pushy, and as, you're not assuming they're going to take it by marching in with your treats. It's a little right. bit kind of an aggressive strategy. Here's my treat jar. You will put it on your shelf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to give them the option. You want to feel like they're like, oh, yeah, that'd be great. Come back with it. And be like, okay, cool. Now, if you say like, okay, I'll come back Friday at two o'clock, come back at Friday at two yeah. o'clock because you, it's so <laughs> important to keep your word. You're just getting to know these people, you know? Um, dog Toronto asked again, uh, do either of you have local Facebook groups for dog owners in your area? I do not. I actually I just started a Facebook group called mm -hmm. Love Your Pets Island. And I started it the week was it the week before Christmas, and I have nine hundred people in it already. Oh, was it yeah. totally organic? Like they just yeah, like were yeah, totally. looking for groups? I've been po posting it on my Facebook page, my main oh, wow. to advertise it. Um, yeah. And I spent twenty dollars to boost it. The ad in the beginning, the, mm -hmm. or the, the boosted post, just to really give it a kickstart, you know. Yeah, um, and it's been a great source for blog posts. I've done loads of different blog posts on different breeds of dogs. And then I've got people in the group to tell me why they love their dog. And I've included that in the article. I did one on German Shepherds and one on Boxer Dogs. And then I have right. people comment about their stuff. So it's a great source of content. Um, and yeah. It's amazing because someone was asking about a pet sitter in there the other day and they were like, oh, Pet Sitter's Island. <laughs> <That's what> it's <laughs> yeah, it's been I love it because what you're doing is you're creating like a space that – um, that you can also promote your blogs mm -hmm. and it's bringing them to your website. It's like subconsciously. And it's totally, also, totally doing um, that. you're creating a really good group for this contest that's coming up again. Yes. Well, that is you my know? ultimate plan. Because yeah. And that's what you've got to do on social media. Yeah. You've got to grow things. You can't just like Facebook. I just watched the Facebook movie again, the social network. It was on TV this weekend. And I mean, if you think about it, like they just wanted to grow it. They wanted to get a lot of people involved, a lot of people yeah. involved. Now that you have the community, now how are you, will you manipulate that community? Exactly. But you can't just start manipulating the community if you don't have a community, right? I think as well, I, I'm not really, the only thing I've done so far is just ask people to comment, um, to, to create content for the blog. You know, tell me why you love your German Shepherd, post a picture and your three or four lines. Have a look on the blog. They're on there. You'll see them. They've, they've come out really nice. Um, but I'm not actually promoting our services or blogs in there yet. I think I need to build the group and get to know them, trust them. You know, so it's a bit like networking face-to-face, -face, networking online. You're not going to just dive in there and start going, hey, look at me. You know, mm -hmm. chatting to people, commenting on their pictures. It's just really a place for them to share photos. Yeah. About, like you say, it'll be great for my contest come June. So, right. Yeah. We've got a Welsh girl that just joined us. And we got, like, your area of the country is just lighting up on this map right now. Kate Adams. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, so cool. Yeah, What's up, Kate? Doc Toronto. Yeah, I was watching Mary Smith's uh, webinar earlier. And she was. She was saying Facebook groups are going to be so important. So, you know, definitely worth looking into it. And I think it's because you don't get it filtered as much, right? Exactly. And she you was talking about that. people feel that they can share more in a group because it's private, you know, their boss isn't looking, certain friend, well, is anything it's private? private. <laughs> I mean. But that's what she was talking about. That, that part is uncanny to me though, Kate, because mm -hmm. anyone can take a screenshot and oh most God. of these groups allow every Tom, Dick and Harry in there. So, mm -hmm. and most people have like, well, maybe not most people, but I know some people that have more than one profile. So mm -hmm. if, you know, I just, right, exactly. I think, I think groups offer a false sense of reality or, I think or so. security. My attitude is don't put anything on the internet that you wouldn't show somebody, you know? And I think Absolutely. that's the attitude you have to have. Like you say, people can screenshot it, you know? You, should, yeah. you shouldn't say or do anything you don't want anyone to know about, really. Just you know, Kate, them. you and Dog Stronto and Mari Smith and Maureen, not Julie, have Maureen said she started a group. You all have inspired me. I think why not? I'll do it. You I'll do, do one for your dog. Lovers of Scottsdale. <laughs> we'll see what happens with it. For your dog walk. Maybe I'll be Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, we could get it going that way too. But maybe I will. I'll do pets at pet lovers of Scottsdale or yeah. what, what would be a good name? And well, then I'll report back every blab. You see, our tagline is Pets It Is Island, Love Your Pets. So I called it Love Your Pets Island. Because <laughs> 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 <I'm> clever. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. All right, girl. So um, I uh, I think we should kind of wrap it up because we're approaching 45 minute mark. We're getting really long winded here. Um, we talked about oh, like everything on our list practically, which is cool. Okay. Our, our next one we have slated for how to come up with great titles for blog, YouTube events and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about that because, oh look, Morocco wants to make an appearance. Come on, come on up, 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 say hello. Here's the collie. Here's the collie. Um, <laughs> I think we should totally do that because um, uh, you're, you blend in. You're so black. Well, dude, this is like, he yeah, like head. <laughs> Whoops. What? He looks like he doesn't have a head. All you can see. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's so sweet. He's like, uh, he's very smart too. Anyways, um, I think. I think that we should do that. What do you think? Yeah, definitely titles. What I do you know. I think there's loads of different strategies you can have for your titles, and some people suck at titles. So I think it would be great. This girl yeah. sucks at titles. No, you so don't. So you're definitely going to be leading the way on this one, girlfriend. You do. And um, we're definitely going to need to have you all help us drive this too. So please submit your questions or topics. Yeah. Um, we all know the how do you create a topic, or I suck at it. Help me. Um, so let's kind of be a little bit more specific with our questions. Um, yeah. That will be our next one. I will get it up on Blab so y'all can subscribe to it, start subscribing to it now so you get those notifications okay. that it's coming up. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really want to try to get that up before this one so I could give you a link now and tell you to subscribe, but it just didn't work out. <laughs> um, and I'll start that, that uh, group and I will report back and I want to hear about everyone else's group. Maybe maybe like the session after that we could talk about our facebook groups and things that have worked and what hasn't worked because yeah, it's definitely more, some, Maureen likes that there's definitely some ways to promote it and there's definitely you need to have some rules just like you do with a normal yeah. facebook group you need to have rules um okay. and be very clear with people i have a very yeah. hard rule if you annoy me you're out <laughs> <laughs> i know I know. And that's why I have the coaching group. It's like, you got to participate. I'm going to delete you because I don't want to be talking with people. I don't know who they are, you know? So, yeah. Because. I think that's great. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. I'm honored that you've chosen to spend your time with us. Yeah. And um, Kate, I love doing this with you. It's just so much you fun. You want to see my hotel room before you go? I do. Show me your hotel room. This is the you commitment. This room and see the bed oh. is in a cupboard. Oh, <laughs> And is that, that a trundle bed? Is that what they call it? It's actually used as a counseling service during the day. So there's like tissues and everything in case I want a little <laughs> cry later. <laughs> now, like, are you going to no. stay there tonight or are you going to go home? No, I'm going home. Murphy bed. Murphy bed. Thank you, Karen. I totally knew trundle was the wrong word. Is that what it is? <laughs> it's called a Murphy bed. A bed in a cupboard. <laughs> yes. Kate, hey, you have to come to the United States. You have to do like a world tour. I know, I know. You have to come to Scotland and see me speak in June. And I'm not even kidding, like that was gonna be my next stop. Where are you speaking at again? A uh, conference in Scotland, the content marketing conference. I wonder if the next time we go to Macedonia, if we could do a pit stop in Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> With baby Kate when she comes along. <laughs> Listen, don't start any rumors. People are going to think I'm pregnant again. I've seen you drinking wine, so you're all right. <laughs> you're right? Look, you can see Rocco's tail. He's like, all right, Mom, come on. It's time to eat. I want to eat. Ooh, Rocco, you're going to nine months out of the year. Oh, in Seattle it does. <laughs> I can't say all right. All right, Kate. Thank Love you, everybody. You again. It's been great. Have a good night. We'll catch up with you online. Take care. Bye. Bye.